The Team Never Quit podcast is sponsored by Navy Federal Credit Union. To earn and save more as a member, learn more at NavyFederal.org. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Team Never Quit podcast. My name is Andrew, hanging out with John and Marcus. What's going on, guys? What's going on? What's happening? Everybody have a good weekend? Absolutely. I did. Good, man. I was in Omaha. Oh. Omaha. Have what? you ever been to Omaha? I've never been to Omaha. I was just in Charleston. I'm going to take Charleston over it. <laughs> Even though you haven't been there. <laughs> I have not been there. Bold choice. Yeah, bold choice. <laughs> no, true. Yeah, I no, it was, it, it was fun. It's uh, You it's, go just for the steaks? Well, the steaks are good there. <laughs> <laughs> you, as advertised on TV. That's right. And of course, and I had to have a steak while I was there a couple podcast. of them. That's right. For sure. And they don't even sponsor us. I'm just telling you, it's a good steak. <laughs> that is awesome, man. I have, I, we bought a swimming pool. You know, it's one of those above like ground Like a Scooby pools. pool? Yeah, one of the, you know, above ground, you know, country folk pools. I cannot keep that thing from turning Those green. are called ponds. Yeah, I got a pond. Well, I mean, it looks like a pond right now. That's for sure. Oh, you can't keep water clear? I cannot keep it clear. No, I've put 10 plus pounds of pH down, five, six pounds of that shock stuff. I don't know what I'm doing. Clean the water out of it. That's what I did. This weekend, I just put a hose in the bottom and it's been draining all weekend. So we'll try again. I feel like you see those on videos that bears always get into and swim around <laughs> right? in your backyard. Or the side goes down and everything rolls out. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just almost, you know, that's going to happen when you buy one of those. You do. Yeah. It's part of the experience. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Well, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. We've got a great guest in store for you guys. If you haven't already, make sure you go subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are up to 93,000 subscribers. We're working hard to get to 100,000. You can help us do that. We'd appreciate it. And we've got some great merch available in the store. The Operation Red Wing t-shirt, the Red Friday t-shirt, the, the Navy SEAL Creed shirt. We got a lot of great stuff. Go check it out. My favorite thing is these new white never quit bracelets. Y'all can check that out at shop.teamneverquit.com. Dot com. We have got a great guest in store. Brooke Keating is a gold star wife and the widow of Navy SEAL Charles Keating, the fourth who died in combat on May 3rd, 2016. Through her tragedy, the C4 Foundation was born, which has helped thousands of SEALs and their families through their ranch and programs. Brooke is also the co-host of the Gold Stars and Stripes podcast. Brooke, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. And I just realized I have my Team Never Quit shirt and I didn't even wear it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you get a pass. I, well, yeah. I was like, oh, you don't have to worry about that, girl. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> it just dawned on Yeah, me. we're on. Hey, we're family anyways. Don't worry about it. That's right. Unless that was your attempt for me to send you a bunch of swag. Yeah, and, that, exactly. If that's the case, I'll send it to you. <laughs> little nudge, just a little, little nudge. <laughs> the subtle hints you drop, that's what I'm talking about. That's, that's right. how you know she's a SEAL too, right? <laughs> Highly trained, motivated. She could slide those little hints in there that would sit in my brain for a day. I was like, man, I'm just going to send her a bunch of stuff just, just to have something the next time. Yeah. All right. So we got to take it way back. Before we get to kind of the story of how you and Charlie met, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Where did you grow up? What was your upbringing like? Okay, so I would say I was pretty blessed. Um, my dad was military. He was a captain in the Navy. I was actually born on Coronado Island um, in San Diego, where a lot of the SEAL team bases are. And then um, we also went back and forth between D.C. and San Diego. So my dad worked at the Pentagon for a while. And we were based overseas in Spain in Rota, which was my favorite place that we were besides Coronado. Um, and yeah, I just had a really, I would say a really blessed life growing up um, in a small town. You can ride your bike to school. Um, I played water polo. I swam. Yeah, that, that's how I know you grew up in Coronado. That's exactly what they do there. <laughs> they ride their bike to school and, and play water polo. Which yeah, is great. So, like okay, so you're a the brat. Guys that made it through the teams um, from Coronado all did really well at the water side of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it, it's amazing the distinction sometimes when you when in the, when the program starts. Like you can, it, buds. It's, it has this unique way of of showing the strength and weakness in everybody. It's pretty humble. Land, yeah, land. I don't know. I don't unless you were a lacrosse player from Coronado. I think we're more water people. Right. The soccer <laughs> players do good, man. They can run like you can't believe. That's true. I'm not great on land. <laughs> Hi, Brooke. Hi, girl. Good to see you. Me too. Sorry, I'm a little 
night ahead of putting something at the house, but um, I'm so excited that you're here. I I just, I love you to death and I love your story. So thank you. For I am on. so excited to see you. The last time I actually saw you was I think in that room. Yeah. So <laughs> it's fun to be back again. Yeah. We were talking about, I was like, was that a year ago or is it two years ago? Quarantine kind of threw our dates off, so. Yeah. So her and Tara interviewed me in this room. That's so, right. So, yeah. That's awesome. Which should be coming out at some point. We're still, you know, figuring out our kinks, but it's yeah, fun. That's <laughs> awesome. Um, so you're talking about your childhood. And did you want to throw in there that you and Tara's dads actually work together? Did yes, our dads went to the Naval Academy together and graduated same year. I think it was class of 75. That's when um, I was born. And they Get hadn't some. seen each other. <laughs> I know. They hadn't seen each other forever. And then it was last Memorial Day. They came into Coronado. And so we all got reunited back together, which was really fun. Okay, so do you have to go to the Army-Navy game every year? My parents do. I did when we were in D.C. And then Tara and I thought about going... Whenever it's in Ireland again, that just sounds really fun. <laughs> All right, what was the Patreon question? <laughs> oh, yeah. We, did we, we haven't ever, done Patreon? We didn't. How did we miss We just started that? talking. We just, just chatted. Getting into it, man. I, <laughs> okay. Okay. This I is forgot actually, we were doing a podcast. This is the same. This is a fun one. What would you wait, choose? Wait. Oh, Let's go ahead. Let's tell Brooke what we're doing. Oh, yeah. So we told her. We just skipped it. Oh, okay. So we do a Patreon question. Patreon's like a membership thing. Um, and It's our bosses. It's the yeah, TQ bosses. The TQ Nation. That's they, right are really awesome um, listeners of the podcast that um, subscribe to get more uh, info or whatever. And they yeah, get support to, the show. Yeah. They're my they, army. Yeah, they get to submit Spartans. Spartans. their own questions. So here's, yep. here's this one is fun. I like it. What would you choose as your animal sidekick if you were in a movie? <sighs> well, that's so hard. Tiger. I'm Saber a Pisces. It's hard to make decisions. I think I just have to, well, it's hard because it's like, do you want a flying animal so you can like, oh, you mean, like scout? Like a, like a That's right. That's like a right. Game of Thrones. Yeah. Or like my favorite animal is an elephant and they're just really cool. This is really hard. Ooh, and a good utility animal mm -hmm. too because they can pack you, pack the gear. Yeah, exactly. I'm going with elephant doing it. Okay. Hands That's a good down. one. Because then like you're completely so smart protected. too. Yeah. You're protected. Yes. They'll love you. They're very loving when they love something. They're very loyal yeah, to loyal. it. Yeah, loyal. You can like curl up into them when yeah. it's warm and like they can carry you on their back. I think it's, yeah. They, they have a great color all the team that matches uh -huh. outfits too. Yeah. Oh, that's, I was thinking about the flight too because like the fact that you could use it like a scout, like a drone, you know, like see ahead, that'd be kind of cool. But you can do the same thing with a giraffe, I guess, to some extent. Really tall. You can kind of see over obstacles. They're pretty... Not aggressive, but they're strong animals. They are aggressive. Yeah. How we strange are giraffes? We know hey, from experience <laughs> they are aggressive. They will whip you with their neck. What? Yeah. yeah. You should... Giraffe? Oh, man. I'll beat the snot out of you. <laughs> yeah. So, God, assignment man. for everyone listening. Google giraffe neck whip. And you will see the craziest... <laughs> craziest yeah. fights ever yeah. with giraffes they like swing their neck around and it's the like toughest thing on their body and it can kill marcus like if that happened <laughs> good god so kill. morbid yeah That's not sucker. marcus no yeah. sucker with me marcus. plenty of times who's standing <laughs> <laughs> me they're not it's like chuck Norris jokes <laughs> Try yeah. again. Do they fight to like get their lady or is it like protective? Like Both. What's and they're real funny about their ladies. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're, giraffes. Oh, oh yeah. man. Yeah. If they're not the right, if they don't come from the same line, they won't mate. Yeah, they won't mate. So there's like 17 different species of giraffes. And if they're not compatible, they won't mate. Just, Which, by the way, my dad had. Um, a male and a female from two different species. And so we had them for what, five years? Yeah, they, just, they were awesome. And they they hung out. Never mated. We were very upset. I forgot you guys had giraffes. Mm -hmm. I've seen the pictures. Yeah. yeah. So that's why you know so much. I'm like, how do you know so much? <laughs> like, oh, we have them. Yeah. yeah. If anybody's wondering, we have pet giraffes. Well, we did. And then <laughs> the, the, the freeze. The freeze of 2020, I guess. Is that 2020? Yeah. 2020. Whenever that crazy. Yeah, the freeze of 2020, we, um, Petunia got frostbite and she died. 
Petunia? Yeah, Petunia Dog. Yeah. Oh, what a name. It's perfect. I oh, know. it's from Toys R Us. Yeah, it's really sad. Remember oh, the two giraffes Petunia. from Toys R Us? When yeah. it shut down, we, we kind of named them that. And then the, uh, the male, he's, he's at a, another ranch. Yeah. You gotta, they have to be paired up. They, yeah. gotta have, they have to have buddies. Yeah. Yeah, you have to have a companion. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. So Arthur's at another ranch. He's and frolicking in the wild in somewhere. Fredericksburg. Yeah, in Fredericksburg. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I think my animal would probably be a dolphin that I could ride. Mm-hmm. I would mm-hmm. want to be able to like just go through the ocean on this awesome dolphin. Be fun. Mm. Yeah. They're so smart. If we're talking about riding animals. Refra- what is animal again? sidekick. If you were in a movie, who would your animal sidekick be? Or what would your animal sidekick be? Oh, man, I have to bring Rigby back. Oh, yeah, you know, Mr. Rigby, man. Love Rigby. He was the best sidekick I ever had. I don't think they cry. He was, he was awesome. That was the first thing he popped in there, and I couldn't When get rid we of were it. there, you had just Put him down. made his little his garden. Yeah. Yeah, his little garden. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. Rigby. I was, I was blessed to have one. I ha- actually have that question in real life happen to me. So if that sucker could well he did talk to me i mean i could understand what he was that's if you spend enough time with them you can figure out what they're trying to say to you absolutely yeah and um i mean he taught me so much and he was always there and he never said one word to me and you know nothing and i i loved him i can't even explain i mourned his death i still do oh i'm gonna cry (laughs) i know it's so sad dogs are the best yeah i mean yeah yeah. it was he was something well, now uh, I feel bad that I didn't pick my dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, don't worry. I mean, I'm just ashamed yeah. of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. That's yeah, terrible. Rigby yeah. is the best. Yeah. That was a great forever immortal. That was yeah. a great. That was a great question. Yeah, that was a good question. Right? That was a great question. Was fun. Splice and two together. Yeah. Who was that? I don't know. I got a name here. Unfortunately, no. Unknown. Name. Unknown. I love unknown. That's right. It's they're way, so it's way cool. more intimate. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> All right, Brooke, let's let's kind of go back into your story. We're jumping all over the place, but I think that's okay. Why don't you tell us a little bit about when you first met Charlie? Actually, it's a very strange story. So he and his girlfriend lived with my boyfriend way back in the day when I was like 18 and I had gone to college. Uh, this is a romance novel. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So we actually knew each other from a long time ago and I was gone for a while at college and I came back and we re ran into each other at, um, it was a country bar. Do you guys remember? It was like in San Diego. Be- yeah. in San Diego. Oh, I'm gonna get in trouble for not remembering this one too. I know. Was, um, um, and they would have like the dancing on Wednesday. Yeah. yeah uh, not, not- it's going to come back to me. Oh, in the middle of this, while we're talking, I'll be like, "Yeah." Or should okay. we think about it right now so we can focus on the whole damn interview? <laughs> we'll come back, but I like, yeah. re-met him there, and then we kind of started dating over the Fourth of July. So we always had that as like our date of us. I don't know. Um, so I met him then, and I think that was in like two thousand. 13 2014 i should remember all my dates <laughs> but now they've all like squished together but um yeah so we met each other and then we started dating and charlie bought a boat um so i moved in with him on his boat oh i always bought a I boat boat <laughs> i knew a couple other guys that did that lived out on their boats Oh, I mean, it was really cool for that time of my life, but I look back and like most of my stuff was at my parents' house, like three miles away, because you only have like two bedrooms, two bathrooms. It's very minimal lifestyle, but it's really fun. That is really awesome. How long did y'all live on the boat? We lived on it for, I think, two years, a year and a half until he deployed. And then I still lived on it for another three uh, after he was killed. So this, we're at the marina down there past the command? Yeah, Fiddler's Cove. Fiddler's Cove? Yeah. Two years, a that's a good life one. life down there. Uh, right, pirate life. It sure is, man. <laughs> that is so That awesome. is awesome. Yeah, we um, one of our favorite movies is Captain Ron, right? Where the family gets oh. on the boat and they yes. travel around. It's so good. And uh, we, we're going to get that. We want to do a we vacation. We want to do a vacation where yeah, we, where we do that trip. But I knew a, uh, 
couple other guys that lived on their boats down there in Fillers Cove. We'd always go down there and hang out with them, but you can't have a bunch of people hanging out. That was that's kind of one of the problems. Either unless you took the yeah. boat out or you or we went back into town. But yeah, you get in trouble down there. Yeah, you get in but trouble. It's one of yeah. those things that you'd come home from work and everyone's barbecuing on all the boats, and you're like, just get home. It's a Tuesday. Do not have. Do yeah. not stop. Don't stop. Do not get a drink. Right, right. Because <laughs> everybody's day off is different, kind of. And, yes. and, and when we're in that, when we were living in that world, that is the best part, and that is absolutely right. And I kind of miss that. That was so much fun because you there was always something going on. Always. Always something going Charlie on. Charlie always, he had like, had to go everywhere wherever the fun was. So it was exhausting, but super fun. Right. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's a great way to say that. That part of our life was exhausting, but it was, it was super fun because it was. People, kind of before cell phones really came online, really. And, and when, when we were out there and then. Well, not when they were there. No. I, when you were there. Yeah. But living out on the. <laughs> yeah. And, and computer. You didn't have a computer we out on the boat, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, um. Man, that's kind of like that old style life, living on a boat. Yeah, it was really cool. He'd wake up every morning and jump in the water, and that's how he'd wake himself up and then go surf. Yeah, he's tougher than me. I would have never done that. Oh, <laughs> Not, are you kidding me? That water's water freezing. Cold. Did he really do that? Oh, man. <laughs> did y'all take the boat out a lot? We did. We took it out. Um, we'd always do it like Memorial Day, 4th of July, and you'd take it like right in like the cove of Coronado. And you'd have a raft up with a bunch of other families. and But by the time you came home, you had like eight huge bags of trash. Everyone left everything on it. You had no more water. And so by the time you got home, you're like, this is my home. And now I have to fully clean it. Oh, no. And then it'll calm down. <laughs> oh, yeah, that could be annoying for sure. Let's take a second to thank our sponsors over at Truebill. If you guys didn't know why free trials renew without your consent every month, it is because businesses are out there to get you. Don't let greedy corporations pocket your money. Download one of the coolest apps in the App Store. Truebill will help you take control of your subscriptions. Truebill is the all new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, you don't want, or maybe you simply forgot about. People on average are actually saving up to $720 a year with Truebill because companies just make subscriptions hard to cancel. Truebill has made it incredibly simple to cancel those unwanted subscriptions. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in just one tap. And your Truebill concierge is there when you need them. They'll help you cancel those unwanted subscriptions that are a little bit harder to cancel so you don't have to. I couldn't tell you how many times I've signed up for a free trial because I wanted to try a feature or I wanted to demo a software or maybe I wanted to just see what it was like and then I completely forgot about it and the next thing I know I'm paying for it. And if it's something less than $10 a month and I'm not paying attention to it, I might not even realize I'm spending that money. I've been able to save probably several thousand dollars between canceling things that I've free trialed and forgot about, or more importantly, the concierge is really where it came in clutch for me. I had one that I could not figure out how to cancel to save the life of me, and that's where I got the concierge to help me out. They were able to get it canceled and got that money back into my account. Truebill has over 2 million users and has helped them save over $100 million. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash TNQ. Go right now, guys. Truebill.com slash TNQ. It could save you thousands of dollars a year. Truebill.com slash TNQ. So that what's what's the best yeah. part about living like people what's the best part about it and then the, the the worst part? Best part about it is I think your way of life. It's like a minimalist lifestyle. It's you, you know, your fridge is tiny. You just you kind of live day to day when you live on a boat, I think. And then worst is probably like the as a girl, the bathroom situation and how much you have to put into a boat to maintain it it's a lot right it's a lot i think i've put more into the boat than the boat's actually worth right now <laughs> oh i'm my sure gosh. that's what boat means bust out another thousand that's right I, I, i'm always <laughs> I'm like yeah i always you know have a buddy who has a boat yep <laughs> that's right exactly that's the way i'm be. never getting a boat again yeah i will Just, give people gas and the, i'll go out with them yeah yeah i'll come down before we'll, we have buddies who have them so we'll we supply the fuel and mm -hmm. We got one of the guys in our crew. We make sure he has all the toys because he's the one guy that'll make you play with them. He's like, "Hey, we're going on the boat. We're going hunting. We're going jet skiing. We're going fishing. Whatever it is." And uh, I want to be friends with that person. I yeah. know he's so much fun. <laughs> he, he's one of the best guys. His middle name is actually Friend. 
right? Is it really? It's really his, his middle name is oh. really Friend, and he is the best friend you can have. I mean, he's built like a freaking grizzly bear, and he's scary looking and everything like that, but he's a fireman and uh, and a fishing boat captain and a bunch of other stuff, but he is the best friend you can have. Are you talking about Rooney? Yeah, Rooney. His middle name is Friend? Yeah, yeah. How about what? that? His name is Rooney Friend? Yeah. Yeah, that is lovely. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can't not love this guy. He's a big freaking poor, poor Rooney. Awesome. He's not yeah. here to defend himself. He is one of the most awesome human. If beings. you put it, he's married. But if you put him on one of those bachelor shows, everybody would be like, oh. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh I just want to hug him. Yeah, he's awesome. He is, man. He's great. Um, okay, so you meet Charlie. Y'all got a boat together. What was y'all's okay. lifestyle together like? Talk about that a little bit. Tell, or tell us a little bit about him, his personality. and Okay, let's see. So he really was, like what everyone says, like larger than life. Like he didn't really have a whole lot of bad days. I also think he had different personalities, like his work personality where he was serious, possibly. And then his home life, he was always fun, always that's a on gift. the go. That, that's a I gift. I think we like lived a mile a minute. <laughs> Um, and I don't think we like ever calmed down when I look back at it. It's like every night. And, um, I actually was training to become a dolphin and sea lion trainer at the time. Um, so I would get up at like four 30 before in the morning. So we'd be doing these nights where it's like, let's go out to dinner. Let's see all these friends yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. wake up early. Um, but he really was, um, one of those people that like every day, and I know it sounds cliche, but he really did wake up and have the best day every day. Aww. Like it was always a great day. It was always fun. He woke up, he loved his life. Um, he loved the water. And so he really made my life really fun, really exciting. That's so sweet. Now some of the, some of our boys, they shine so bright. They're not allowed to stay down here that long. Like, I heard that and I actually wrote that down that's like you carry them with you and like people think that it like dulls out the more they're gone I'm like no way they nope. like light it stronger for you because of who they were mm-hmm. it's yeah well it's almost like you're getting front loaded with it like you get yeah. that whole time with it and then because he has to leave not allowed to stay down here that long yeah I agree it, the, you know the think about that how strong he is that the that we're still talking about that fool <laughs> I know, I know. Every day, I'm like every day talking. I know, right? Every day, it's like a good talk. It's yeah. Never like, oh, it's always like, oh my gosh. And you always tell yourself, you're like, I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna be like him and I'm gonna crush him today. In some ways, you wake up and you're like, I'm not gonna crush him this day. No, nope, <laughs> I'm not gonna yeah. be like him today, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> but I will remember how he would have crushed the day, and yes. that is yeah. how I Great get job. through. Yeah, I know, right? Great job. You know what I'm saying that. Yeah, he. That's true. Those those guys are the batteries. And you plug them in, yeah. right? And they just, it doesn't matter. It's kind of like, oh, man, we were, this wasn't even supposed to be fun, but it's fun. Yeah. I just can't yeah. find a bad time. Yeah. No, he definitely always was like one of those people that it's like, we're going to have a vacation. We're going to go here. As soon as I have a three day weekend, I have this entire thing planned, which was really awesome to be with someone like that because you never had a dull moment ever. Right. <laughs> She's that. That's what she is. She yeah. planned, I mean, our trips, matter of fact, when she start after we're going through it, well, when we're, while we're going through them, everybody's like, "Man, we're always doing something. We're having to go here and take these pictures." But then afterwards, mm-hmm. everyone's like, "I'm so glad you planned the trip." Yeah, the memories. <laughs> Someone like that, like yeah. you. I'm like the memories you take from that. At the time, you're like, "Okay, we're gonna wake up. We have this. We're doing this again." And then you come home and you're like, "I can't believe what an amazing." trip yeah. and adventure that was right. like i don't regret any of that because you could just go on vacation and stay in the hotel room the whole time or like right around the hotel or you could actually experience the culture and the atmosphere and everything of wherever you're going and that's what i like to do i want to immerse myself in wherever it is and really experience it i don't want to just be a tourist i want to i want to feel it and no, yeah. and bring that home with me. So, I mean, that's the only reason I want to go somewhere. Oh, that's so. true. I tell you what, man. Bernie Mac taught me something. He's like, when you take a break, you break. <laughs> I even teach that to my kids. Yeah. My son used the line on me the other day. 
And when you have somebody who can actually plan out the route and the routine and the break times in between, because I never would have rested when we first got somewhere. It's like, hey, let's just go. But then she's yep. like, no, we get here, we're going to chill for a bit. Yeah, right? I, do, kind of I do plan breaks. Yeah. <laughs> I plan like downtime because if you don't, then you are just going a mile a minute. Yeah, and you, people who don't know how to break, if you don't plan it for them, they won't. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to completely take back what I said earlier about Nebraska. I'm going to go there because I've never been and I'm going to fully immerse myself and experience everything <laughs> and love it. Do you want to hear about our Nebraska? We were in, oh, did you tell her we were in Omaha? Uh, uh, yeah, I just said. So, we go to Omaha for a work thing Marcus had, and um, we made this commitment to ourselves that we were going to go to church every Sunday. So we had to find a church there to go to since it was Sunday morning. And it was a mile from the hotel uphill, straight uphill. Both ways. And there was no Uber or anything. <laughs> so we walked in dress shoes up the um, hill to church, which was fine. We were like 10 minutes late, but whatever. And, um, I mean, like San Francisco Hills. You yeah, don't think like Omaha, Nebraska, you think Cornhuskers. I was like, yeah. man, it's supposed to be flat out here. No, it was straight uphill. It's, I mean, seriously, <laughs> I was it, impressed. Um, <laughs> so we do church, whatever, and we're leaving. And I was like, gosh, my feet hurt so bad. I'm in dress shoes and a dress. And they had one of those electric scooters on the corner, but there's only one. So Marcus and I both get on this electric scooter. <laughs> He's in the back driving it, and I'm in the front. I've got my dress on. He's in a suit. Looked like it had hydraulics on it. it was, I was throwing sparks <laughs> off the back end. I was hitting the front and back. And we That's do awesome. the electric scooter down the hill. <laughs> it was so, people were looking at us like we were crazy. It was an awesome date. But I, I was like, I'll, I'll never forget it. I said, I'll never forget this. This was so much fun. Thank you, Omaha. That is a good date. That's a great adventure and some dedication. I love it. Yeah, it was so fun. Because she was gorilla gripping for the death grip on the, on the handlebars. Because I was standing in the back, right? I was terrified you're going to fall over. We have no helmet. She had her hands right in front of the brake. So if I squeeze the brake too hard, you know. It's, yeah. So I was having a brake throttle modulate. <laughs> She can't ruin her outfit. No, no, no. Not, trust me. That was in my... She was in a dress. I was like, it's almost yeah. but uh, Endo this on this dude and freaking dress over a mess, right? Oh, uh, I was... Yeah, but we had so much fun. Well, so was, thank you, Nebraska. That yeah, they're, was our they're great. experience. We were only there for one day, but it was it was fun. I had a blast with them. I, I love that yeah. place. <laughs> Last time I was there, it was freezing. And uh, this, this time... The weather was perfect, 68 degrees. That's yeah, that's perfect weather. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah, that's the perfect. Oh my gosh. Okay. So um I love hearing the stories about trailers. First of all, did you go to the academy? I didn't. I am I didn't zero think so. other than like my dad and Charlie. Right, right. That's what and, I thought. Yeah, no, I don't think I could cut it. I'm kind of a wildflower. <laughs> <laughs> well. I love that. You're well, the fact that you be they married, matched you up with one. That's the same way with this. Yeah. This kind of deal. It's like, uh, y'all are the seals. <laughs> like, you're the special one. You understand that? Yeah. I, I make this perfectly clear, guys, because this is what I had to go with er through everything I had to go through just to stand next to this one. And that's what he had to do, to stand next to you, because you how bright y'all shine. And then when you get your footing, man, y'all go. Mm -hmm. And like I said, he's a blessing to have down here. That's why we have minimal time with him, but so are you, for oh sure. Oh, my gosh, it's lovely to be with you guys but boy are you a lot <laughs> thank you amen to schedule amen to take care of <laughs> i think feeding is one of the like biggest things i'm like yeah. how much do you guys eat yeah a little more <laughs> <laughs> i'll have a little more i'll just have a little more um love it so y'all when y'all right before deployment y'all um ended up having like a little quick wedding right is that can yes, you talk about that? we did so my family owns um, a christmas tree farm my grandpa started it when he was younger and it's my favorite place in the world it's in upstate new york oh and really are you serious it's like a hallmark oh. movie come on come on you didn't grow up on a christmas tree farm and marry a navy seal in the right? boat yes. <laughs> <laughs> life, you know? you have to all the weird angles. i feel like this is a setup <laughs> definitely <laughs> Yeah, you ha it's so weird. I think it started because, like, at the time, my grandpa once started a cattle ranch, and they were paying people to start Christmas tree farms at the time. So he was like, okay, I'll just divert and go that way. 
And so now we have it in our family. It's just a fun place to Good go. Lord, how many acres is that? We're starting to buy property around it to kind of grow the area. That's in upstate New York, you said? Yeah, right on the border of Pennsylvania. Ah, it's, man, it's beautiful up there. It's really pretty. It's it's gorgeous. So, yeah, so Charlie and I did this big trip um, before he was about to deploy. We went to the Christmas tree farm and he proposed there. Um, and he was acting super strange all day. And I thought we were about to get in this massive fight before we were on this like three week month adventure together. And then he proposed. I'm like, okay, that <laughs> makes sense why you were so strange. Why are you being so quiet? You're not a quiet person. Oh, um, oh that's the best so part that about was- Seals is like, he probably went to covert. He's like, I'll, I'll hide, hide all this from her. I'll keep, you know, they, she won't know anything that's going on. Right. And I, I, <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, <laughs> on their end, they're like, yeah, what the hell's wrong with my guy? Yeah. What do you mean you're quiet? You never shut up. (laughs) It was very strange. So that was really special. We did New York City and then we traveled to we traveled to Mexico, Zihuatanejo for a week. And we did um, New Year's there. And that was a blast. And he got to surf. And then we did the BVIs for another week and rented a boat with a bunch of friends Then came back. So that was this like crazy whirlwind of fun. Then um, it was actually him who wanted to get married before deployment, um, which I was shocked because he's a Catholic. So I was very surprised by that. (laughs) Um, But we did. We went to the courthouse. My dad was there. We both came from work. So I literally had like fish guts in my hair during it. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Um, And he had like changed out of his uniform in the parking lot. Did that, knocked out a little like happy hour dinner. And then we both had to go back to do things. We had to like separate to go back to do work stuff. Um, But we did have a huge wedding planned for November when he was supposed to come home. I think it was like 400 people. Oh, wow. Um, We are supported by Navy Federal Credit Union. You guys know that because I mention them every single week because they are an incredible sponsor. They help us put out new episodes every single week. We are super grateful for them. When you hear the name Navy Federal Credit Union, you might think that it is just for members of the United States Navy. But in fact, Navy Federal Credit Union serves all branches of the armed forces. They even serve the families of service members and veterans of all the branches. They're experts in military finances. They empathize with members' lives and they go above and beyond to make sure they don't miss out on financial opportunities. Navy Federal Credit Union has got incredible programs for veterans and their families. And when it comes to buying a car, it's no different. Navy Federal knows it is a big investment and that is why they offer rates as low as 1.79% APR on new vehicles, along with the flexibility with monthly payments and terms. And now when you refinance your auto loans from another lender, members could actually save and get $200. Get decisions in seconds and start saving with Navy Federal Credit Union, available to members who are active duty, veterans, and their families to earn and save more as a member. Learn more at NavyFederal.org. Navy Federal is federally insured by NCUA credit and collateral subject to approval rate subject to change and based on credit worthiness so your rate may differ refinance loan must be at least five thousand dollars to be eligible for the two hundred dollars terms and conditions apply so do you guys i don't have you been to the midway before in san diego yes yes so there is this it's really cool it's my dad retired on it um it's an old ship but to the right of it is this really pretty pavilion. So we were going to get married there. So you could see the Midway, see Coronado, see now that I look back, you can see Rosecrans, yeah. <laughs> Fort Rosecrans. That's a great area. That's something. Um, so yeah, so that was the plan before we deployed. So we got married, I think three weeks before he deployed. Oh, wow. Did you have anybody, like nobody was there? No, just my dad. Just your dad. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think who knew. Um, I'm not sure anyone knew in his family. I think both my parents knew, but no one else. We kept it pretty quiet, mm-hmm. pretty private. And then um, I think his stepmom, Deanne, saw my military ID and saw that my last name was changed one time. Oh, come on. Is that how that happened? Anything. And then when like everything happened, she's like, I knew it. I knew uh, you so that, that's married. when that came out. Y'all were married, right? Or when that happened. That's when, when it he, came out. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. wow. How'd they take that? Really well. I mean, we're a very close, I'm very, um, very fortunate. We're a very close family um, and his family's amazing. And 
Yeah. So they found out because they had to, of course, contact the next of kin right. first. Um, and it was his brother because his brother was in the teams. He got out um, and he when he like everything happened, it's like we have to contact Brooke and people are like, how come? <laughs> right. Oh, my gosh. Um, so, no, they've always been very, very supportive. Oh, good. Can, yeah. you, can you tell our listeners about like what happened to him for the people that don't know? Yeah, absolutely. I can tell the story. Um, So when I found out I was on the docks um, when I was working for the dolphin and sea lion program. So I wasn't on the boat at the time. And when we got the call, it was very, very early in the morning. And I think his brother and the chaplain, and I'm not sure who else, like went on the docks at Fiddler's Cove to tell me first. And they tried to get on the boat, got on it, and then I wasn't there. And then it started to like figure out like where I was at the time, but you can't have your phones on you. And then Charlie's dad was in Houston working. So we were all separated. Um, I finally got the news. It was, you know, you finally come back to your phone and it's like an hour and a yeah. half later, like a list of everyone and you know something bad happened. So his brother was the one to tell me. Um, he was, in, I don't think he wanted to tell me on the phone, but I made him. <laughs> um, so he did. He told me, I remember I was at the fish house at the time when I walked up. So it's kind of a strange <laughs> memory. So I eventually didn't go back to work just because of, I wanted to keep it kind of a happy place. And then that is like the ending to, you know, that chapter of my life. But um, so he was in Missoula in Iraq and they were under attack. They had joined um, the other platoon, I believe, um, to help keep the partner forces away and they were against ISIS and he was up on a roof and he was a sniper up there and he got shot. I actually think um, it had hit his plate um, and come back in. So it hit him like right by his heart. So um, what all the guys said was that he continued, you know, as you guys do to shoot and hold your ground. And then he, um, he died up there. Um, but they brought him back down, they held everyone off. And eventually they um, won that, that one battle, I think. Um, but it's crazy. You can see the, they brought back the door from the car that they had put him in, I believe. And it's just all exploded. Oh, yeah. And it's really eye opening to see. Um, so that's what happened to him. He was the only casualty on our side during that, which was really, really fortunate. Um, and I'm still really close to all the guys who were with him. And they have a lot of them have named their kids after Charlie. And I always wonder how people go about kind of explaining that story. And they are very open to telling their kids they want to know that, you know, their dads are here for a certain reason because of Charlie. And that's really special to take with me forward. Oh, that's so I'll put this out to cry. everybody on the, <laughs> it, it, that's listening and in the world right now. If you run across some guy named Charlie, he's a good dude. Yeah. <laughs> Especially Team Guy yes. Charlies. Yeah. Team Guy Charlies are the best. <laughs> I mean, just solid, solid guys. Mm -hmm. I've always met good Charlies. They are. Good, yeah, it's a good feel. It's it good is. Guys. When you see it, it's right. like one of the best labs I've ever run across, except for Riggs with name Charlie. And then the best guys that I saw, like Team Guy Charlies. If you have one of those as a friend or if you if run across one of them, make sure you buddy up with them because they're down here for that. They're down here to be great friends and well, just awesome dudes, man. We can relate to that because we named our son Axe after Matt Axelson. And, um, and, and he knows who he's named after. And he knows that... Um, that was a huge picture of Axe. Oh, bed it says, I will watch over you. It's yeah, his we have a Matthew's his guardian angel. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't worry about Axe. He's going to be fine. <laughs> and it's funny. I mean, yeah, he has. I mean, he's going to fill those shoes very well. Oh, and time. every team guy that's passed over there watches out for him. Mm -hmm. All the kids, yeah. all, all these little seal pups running around have a a, a massive following in, uh, of, of seals. Well, Dead and alive. 
But that's also their guardian angel. So yeah. I, I believe that your Charlie will be the little Charlie's uh, guardian angel forever. Like he'll always. I actually him. talked to Cindy yesterday. Aww. She's doing very well. <laughs> that's awesome. I love Cindy. Yeah, she's a great. Yeah, she's a great gold star. She's a great friend. Yes. And a great mom. She is. We have not met her son yet. Got it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was say y'all are amazing ladies. <laughs> The gold stars. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I that's a know, tough club to get into. And it's, you know, for the way, way y'all react, respond and the way y'all carry us. I mean, it's, it's something hats mm -hmm. off to you. Just wanted to tell um, you that. Speaking of Cindy, you know, after everything, unfortunately you get to see the people that have gone before you and the, the gold star widows and Cindy was one of the main ones that I looked at and I just really respected how she carried her life and how she honored him. And so she was a big person in my life to help guide me the direction that I wanted to go and be the person that I wanted and represent Charlie in the right way, you know? Aww, so yeah, she was a big, I am widows, big, man. Yeah. When, when, when a new one comes in and y'all start swarming and y'all protect each other and she, that's something. To, to mm -hmm. it truly is it's just it's a stronger i you know i moved to virginia beach not that long ago and the gold star community here is very tight-knit very strong and they pulled me in immediately and you have this group of you know sisterhood oh, oh yeah like, <laughs> it's like it's own mafia they check in on <laughs> straight you. up yeah. badasses man mm -hmm. still why the widows yeah Strongest ones down here, man. I love that it, you and um, Cindy have bonded like that because she is someone to look up to. I look up to her. She's just an amazing woman. And um, yeah. I yeah, love she's a tough cookie. I am definitely not like a big decision maker. I like to make jokes all the time. You know, Charlie and I had that like similar personality. And she's kind of the one that's like, this is your time. You need to make decisions. You yeah, know, she's, exactly. she's so disciplined. Right. To go We're going to do this. You better get your butt over. That's the Asian. She's <laughs> yeah, so, that's she's right. That's so that discipline. Yeah. That's that Asian discipline, man. That's, that's a real like, thing. Brooke, make a decision. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Everyone happy. <laughs> yeah, she's awesome. I love her so much. Well, good. Um, yeah. So where, after that happened, um, tell us about the C4 Foundation and what you've done to create, to honor Charlie and um, keep his memory alive. Yeah. So um, like I said, you know, I really watched what some of the other gold stars had done and how people um, very much wanted to celebrate the life of a lost one. And it, I actually had talked to Tara in the beginning um, and threw out some ideas to her and got together with, with Charlie's dad and stepmom, my parents, and some other, excuse me, close friends of Charlie. And we're like, okay, what was something that he was very passionate about and it was family you know he has like a bazillion people in his family um and they're all very amazing people um and then he has his seal team family and we're like how can we kind of combine the two and support the guys and Charlie would always tell these stories of when the guys were gone, a lot of them would receive like the Dear John letter, sort of like you're deployed, the communication's very hard, and I don't know if it's going to work. And so we got together and we're like, how can we possibly support these families in a way that isn't intruding into their lives too much, isn't super clinical, it's just a way to give back time to them a little bit. So um so we had big plans to have some sort of land, some sort of property for them. And we actually ended up getting a 560 acre uh, ranch, which was way above what we ever thought was going to be possible for like 10 years. Um, so it's about an hour and a half outside of Coronado, uh, outside of the military base. And we set up a place up there that's just very natural for them. They can go up there with their families, reintegrate, 
with them, build communication. Um, when they come back from deployment, it's a big decompression spot for the guys and their families. So we're hoping, and we're really working right now with, um, we have a great program director, Jennifer Cooper, and she's been working with a neuroscientist out of um, out of USC, and they've created our FROG program, which is family resilience um, or reintegration. You can use them both through optimism and gratitude. So really it's just go up there, reintegrate with your family, build that communication back up, fly fish, hike, ride horses, you know, um, and re kind of come back to that meeting ground, find where your values lie in your home. And, and so that's what we've been working on for the last five years. That. We are supported by Super Beats. Let me tell you guys, when you start to get older, we start to age, we start to fatigue, and the lack of endurance you start to feel, we can't always fix it with more and more coffee. I can tell you firsthand, about two o'clock after lunch, I start to slip a little bit down in my chair, get a little tired, wanna kick my feet up, but I can't because I got a lot of work to do. And I'm gonna tell you about a product that has been an incredible sponsor, but more so an incredible way for me to get that boost of energy I need to get through the rest of my day. A new way to start your day is the Super Beats Heart Chews. They are a tasty treat that will give you the energy you need and they are good for you. It is not often you'll find something that tastes good and is good for you. Add two delicious plant-based Super Beats heart shoes to your morning routine and promote heart healthy energy for your day without that awful caffeine crash because Super Beats heart shoes unique clinically researched grapeseed extract promotes heart healthy energy and normal blood pressure as part of a healthy lifestyle. I love that I could take these bad boys every single day. They taste a lot like another chewable candy out there but it's way healthier for me. It does not give me that sugar I don't need. It's not giving me the caffeine. I've never really been a coffee person anyways. So this is an incredible product. They have amazing flavors. The pomegranate, probably my go-to. And the grape seed extract used in Super Beats Heart Shoes has been clinically shown to be two times as effective at supporting normal blood pressure as a healthy lifestyle alone. So do more for your heart and treat yourself with Super Beats Heart Shoes. They are so delicious. I mean, the fact that my three-year-old niece walks next door to get these tells you something, all right? It's good for you. It's good for your heart and they taste amazing. For our listeners, you can get up to 45% off. Plus, they're going to take care of shipping at superbeats.com slash TNQ. This is their best offer available anywhere. That's superbeats.com slash TNQ for up to 45% off at superbeats.com slash TNQ. If you're looking for that tasty sweet treat to have around the house, it's still good for you. It's good for heart health. Then check out superbeats.com slash TNQ. That. It's that great. Awesome. And because it's so close. Yeah. And I tell you what, yes. having been out a while now and doing what we do, it's I tell the guys, I'm like, hey man, for every 10 you're in, it takes about two to detox, right? And we get ramped so far up when we go out the door. We're different than every other unit. You know that. So when we when we when we're in there, it's different. <clears throat> it's almost as if in order to pull that back, you have to take and put them in an in an, an arena that is so far from war. That it's almost as if the war we were in, we fought one, and now this is the peace we get afterwards. That because that's why you ultimately you fight. You fight for peace, and that's in like a street fight in a school. And I was like, hey man, there, there's something uh, people overlook how how important peace is. Just to have just to have that calm, right? So when we're fighting Absolutely. like that, and you stick them in an arena where they all they can do is fish, <laughs> yeah. right? And just there's no nature, ain't nobody yelling, screaming, or trying to kill you. It it'll do the same thing as war does in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And then you come back into the medium, which is, which is life, right? Back Brings in that mindset yeah, yeah. back to sure. instead of being like such high adrenaline for yeah. so long where you're fight or flight, you're coming back to that, um, kind of mentality of there's not so many triggers going on. Um, and then we're really hoping it's what you're saying. Like when you get out, you need so many years to decompress from it. So we're really hoping this will be a preventative measure for the guys while they're still active. Yeah. Sure. Well, I was thinking about this too. It ought almost be another uh, enlistment. Like when you get out, your ass is up for another four. You're four transitioning out, like 
decompressing. You're going to school. We're going to get you a job. I mean, as well trained as they are, that shouldn't be an issue. It's like we cut that piece off for whatever reason or it just hadn't been implemented. Yeah. But if you're thinking about it, the ramp up and the ramp down it should be just the opposite of itself. And then the, the guys won't have that. And the guys won't have that, that, that extreme issue because normally I think what we run into, the problems we run into is what the military takes care for for us. Medical, dental, housing, all that. You know, they just meals, food, like normal stuff. So we can concentrate on our job. And then guys get tied up around that. But yeah, that's awesome. I mean, you guys kind of have the same thing going on there. You know, I've known a lot of the military spouses that have come out with you and even some of the like some personal couples that I know that have gone out to your guys's ranch and just took a week to yeah. decompress, hike, be together, you know, and it's just immeasurable, like how much that's helpful to the, to the couple, to the family, yeah. even to the spouse herself yeah. or the team guy. Two yeah. weeks is pretty much what you need to form a habit or to break one. Mm -hmm. So if you give it 16 up to 20, oh. it's just like a, it's a detox for your whole system. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so special that you're providing a place so close to the base. Yeah, that that's key right yeah, there. That most people don't duty, want to travel. Yeah. Well, the active duty guys can just take their wives up there, take their kids. That really is huge. And land is so expensive. Like most foundations can't afford know, something like, like that. So that's, <laughs> that's really, really cool that y'all have. And that. you have a Christmas tree farm. <laughs> yeah, you're the queen. We were very blessed. Who is this? What's her name? You know, help in the beginning. It. And the lady who we got the ranch for had this crazy kind of story because we made this video talking about how Charlie loved Pepsi so much and he drank it all the time, which is why he was probably so shaky. And she, I believe, was married to one of, you know, the largest shareholders or something that had to do with PepsiCo. Oh my god. And watch that video. Now. That's how you got that? <laughs> Marcus has an opposite story. All that. right, so <laughs> that's funny because I <clears throat> I loved Pepsi. I loved Pepsi up until the point I got my ass kicked in Afghanistan and that Pepsi bottle that I had to drink out of. That, and all I knew was because it had the lid on it. She probably doesn't know what we're talking about. Yeah, there's right, a... Dude. Yeah, tell me the story. What is yeah, Okay, this? so when Marcus oh, was in, um, in, the village, in the village during Red Wing, um, there was a Pepsi bottle. Three liter. In the village. That Old. they got water out of, like they gave it to him to drink water. And he, I met him five years after Operation Red Wing. He still had the stomach virus five years later that he had from drinking out of that Pepsi bottle. All right. So imagine a three liter Pepsi bottle, right? But after sun hits it for a long time and it gets scratched up, you can't really, I couldn't see through it, right? And then the lid was completely polished white but you could barely see the pepsi logo on it yeah and they brought that thing to me i was like sweet pepsi and i i think they might have had it jammed up a goat's ass for a couple of months before i got a hold of it because whatever the sm it was probably a joke right there playing on me and I would, i'd have to throw up oh my god and they would they would transport me throughout the village and i would purposely throw that thing down the side of the mountain and lose it on purpose yeah. i mean this happened multiple yeah. times this is how funny this is they kept bringing the Pepsi. They kept bringing that back. damn thing back. <laughs> yeah. So if you, I would throw it off the mountain. <laughs> if you read Lone Survivor in the book, with the the Pepsi bottle is actually something that a lot of people bring, bring up. up. Yeah, they're like, funny. has he ever drank Pepsi, Pepsi after Pepsi that? Bottle, because it gave so him. Was it Pepsi in it? Or was no, it was water. It was water. It was just water, but it was the Pepsi but dirty, bottle. I love Pepsi. I water. love Pepsi. I yeah. drank the mess out of it. But right? it was it's just like this whole. It's just the mental thing. The Pepsi <laughs> bottle, it, he ended up getting such a bad stomach virus. I was so sick from it. He he got rid of it, like, what, mm -hmm. three years ago or so? But a it's a funny story now. I can't believe something can stay with you that long. Yeah. That was, like, in your hey, body. That's insane. You can't believe it's what happened to me. very gross. Yeah. <laughs> it's very gross. Go on, girl. You know by now. You yeah. can't believe what happens to seals. <laughs> So I love that Charlie has a good Pepsi story. Yeah. It's, a, it's a happy Pepsi story. I'm happy, happy for you. And I, I'm, I'm a happy Pepsi <laughs> fan. Just, I'm not trying to, that thing kept me alive. I mean, I drank the water. It's just, oh it just didn't taste gosh. like Pepsi. So yeah. every time I try it. Or try, water. Or water. <laughs> yeah. It tastes like oh water. Oh my gosh. I, maybe if you close your mind hard enough. There yeah. Okay, so I closed my Pepsi eyes every time and held my nose and held the bottle away from my mouth. Yeah. You can't oh. imagine what this thing smelled like. Oh. Yeah, I'll never forget it. Okay, so <laughs> the C four. Why'd you bring that up? Pivot. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> pivot, pivot. Right. I know. Sorry. <laughs> so she in 
ends up having a heart for the story and she just gave y'all a good deal on it or what? You know, she did. And then she gave us a carry back note, which was very helpful. Um, so that, you know, we were able to get the property and then pay her back in time for some of it, That's which a great was incredibly gift. Yeah. kind. And she's still a part of the foundation. Um, oh, wow. She still helps us with everything that's up there, like the, the, you know, the electricity. One of the pro- one of the places is totally off grid, um, so the whole property is well water. One of them's um, off grid, so it has all the solar panels on top. Um, It's really special. So yeah, she was very special. So we got the property and then right now we're finally starting to build stuff up there because it was really her, um, her own property with her husband at the time. um, And he was a heart surgeon out of South Africa. So a lot of the properties based out of what looks and feels like South Africa. So there's Watusi cattle on it. Oh, wow. wow, Yeah. Oh, it's cool. really, yeah, That's cool, really man. special. If you um, hadn't seen those before, there's something. Yeah. When a really cow something. walks, yeah, yeah, there's something. We had some. Because they look like, something. is it the, like, Texas Longhorns? Yeah, but they're kind, kind of curved of? a little bit. Yeah. Think Hellboy yeah. kind of deal, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, they're they're completely, yeah. they're wide, too, man. Yeah. yeah. We had a couple at the ranch. They're really cool. They're really pretty. I mean, they are more of just, you drive by and look at them. Yeah. <laughs> That's about, you know, all they are. But we've. We saved them. We kept them on the ranch just because they're so unique and beautiful. Do you get to go up there often? I do. Since I moved, I've been back a few times. So I am struggling with that, um, that it's so far away. Cause normally I was up there once a week, couple times a month, you know, we'd be up there. Our program director built some really special weekends, so spouses weekends or warrior weekends for just the SEAL. So it was really fun to be up there. They do off sites for the teams. Um, We've had a memorial service up there. Um, There's in the works a wedding, a SEAL wedding. So I do miss going up all the time because there's horses, there's, oh yeah, uh, you know, a a buffalo, there's Aww. pigs yeah. and chickens, and I miss fresh eggs. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's healing. Going somewhere like that has a healing effect. Oh, it's a different completely environment yeah. than a technical, like a hospital kind of deal. And that's, I mean, that's, hey, tell team guys that. Like, hey, look, man, you're coming to hang out. Like, we're going to have breakfast, yeah. lunch, and dinner. We're going to go out and do some fun stuff. I mean, this isn't, you got to sit down and be miserable the whole time. That, yeah, we'll you pass can that. woodwork. You can, go, yeah, you can bring your car work on it. You can, there's a little gym, there's everything. And it was really healing and still is. Um, I mean, I can only speak for myself, but I would think his family would, and my parents would think this too, is that it was like very therapeutic for us too. Cause you know, after everything happens, you don't really know what to do. And you kind of push all that grief away. And I think that this was really helpful because I'm able to talk about him every day and it's not really work, you know, it's, um, it was very helpful to me. So I've talked about him literally every day since he's died and I have no uncomfortableness and it's really positive for me and his dad, who's our president talks about him every day. And I think it's just been extremely therapeutic for us too. Oh, I love that. That's awesome. Um, so other than the C4 Foundation, you and Tara have a podcast. Yes. Can oh, you... my gosh. That was so fun. Um, and it still is. So <laughs> That's awesome, man. <laughs> Look on your face when you said that. Y'all have a good yes. time doing it then. It's so, I mean, Tara's just a blast. We're like different personalities, which is great. Like she is an extrovert, like to a T, and I'm more of a homebody. So we bring out these different personalities in each other and I really enjoy it. And it kind of came out originally, we wanted to start a wine bar. So we had an LLC, we had everything in line to start a wine bar. And then COVID hit, literally, we were looking at places in Imperial Beach in uh, San Diego to start one. Because I wanted a place to have mostly for the spouses to come and talk to each other and build that communication and sisterhood with one another. 
And then from that, people would come to me and be like, what does your foundation do? What does this foundation do? What about this organization? I'm like, how can we have like a forum or something that explains to all the families or spouses or something that what all that like where they can find all the help that they want or if this spouse needs a job how can we find her a job and that's how we just came up with the fun idea of a podcast i mean we put it out every once in a while um and we have women entrepreneurs on there we have gold stars we have women in the military we have guys that come on Melanie was on, who is very important. <laughs> um, she is. I absolutely and agree. So it just, you know, uh, we're just having fun with it. It's not super serious. I think down the line, we definitely want to get together with you and see how we can grow the women's, the women's sisterhood of either veterans or active duty um, and bring everyone together and build that relationship. Yeah. I'll right, be the most powerful thing down here. I know. That's the most powerful network down there. When y'all start doing that, mm-hmm. y'all, because of the way y'all operate and what you've been through, this is that, that, no, that's I something. love that y'all are doing that. And um, and both of your personalities are so great. I love Tara to death. She's one of my favorite people. So I, I just, it makes me so happy that the two of you have that going. And I think y'all are going to do really big things with it. She is so much fun. I'm very fortunate to have her in my life. Actually, so Dan was my Keiko. Um, oh wow when charlie was killed so we really? had one guy named jimbo and then he deployed and then dan took over for him because charlie and dan had known each other pretty much since buds i think yeah. um so he took over so he knows the ins and outs of my life and that's tara and i were already friends but that's when we became really really close so they've been very important in my life so did you go through buds with charlie I think they were one off of each other because Dan was a officer. Yeah. I think. Um, but were you? Tara's with- told me this story a million times and you would think I would remember. And it just leaves my brain every time. We all know what we all Were you and uh, Charlie together when, oh. he, when he went through buzz? No. So he had already done three deployments, three and a half before me. So he did all of his at three. Yeah. And then when he came before, Right when he was transitioning to SEAL Team 1, that's when we were uh, uh, exactly. starting. To and he, he worked over at the Mammal Cages, right? I did, in that's Point something. Loma. All right. So another one of our buddies uh, married the girl that was in the, the road, Shamu, at the uh, SeaWorld. Oh, okay. And we would be at Danny sometimes, and, and she'd come walking in. Her hair was, she just got out of the tank, right? Her hair would still be wet and everything. Yeah. And he would be over there hugging it. And we were like, bro, your wife rides a killer whale for a living. All right. What the hell are you doing? To, uh, nothing. I mean, how did you yeah. even land that? That's a, she's the yeah. coolest yeah. girl. Those, those mammal cages are something. I've Dude, swam up yeah. on them a couple of times accidentally. Like at night, we I swam up on the mammal cage a couple of times, man. And it's a different world to get you in need there. To be and, careful. I mean, there's to, to get in there and work with those things. Um, yeah, man. I'm underwater swimmers. <laughs> I, Charlie told me a story when we first started dating because I had just started um, working there for an internship. And he told me that I'm pretty sure it was the same thing with you. When you guys went through buds, they would send. It's right the there. The cage is right there beside it. Oh man. Yeah, Up against you guys. And they stopped doing that. I think Charlie's class was one of the last ones. He's like, I remember those things. We would like his partner, um, would they would fight to like, who would be on the bottom? Oh yeah. Who, who had the attack board and who didn't? That's a real thing. I check it out. If you want to know how you move in, in the water compared to a fish or a mammal, all right, get a, lay on your belly and crawl on land. That's how fast you move in the water compared to everything that walks on the land. And when something <laughs> swim, in San Diego, when that bioluminescent trail comes whipping, I mean, neon green, you can't miss it's it. It's so pretty. Yeah, unless you're in there with it <laughs> and you don't know what it is. Something curious is like, what is that? There's a human in here again trying to be a fish. <laughs> They call themselves seals. Yeah, I think they're seals. True or not, because like it didn't, it wasn't very true when I worked there. But he would always say you'd want the female dolphin because a female dolphin would come and like poke, 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 poke. But the male dolphin would come and just like wham, like (laughs) ram you, (laughs) take you out. Oh my god! What buzz class was Charlie? 
he was two six six. I think yeah. he started and then maybe got sick and rolled. I should remember all of this and I'm just blanking right now. Yeah, I was just curious. Well, I we've taken up an hour of your time, but I just wanted to say, like, thank you so much for coming on. And we love you. And thank you for sharing a part of Charlie, too, with this. And we really wish you the best with C4 Foundation and with um, the podcast. How can people listen to the podcast? Like, what are the plugs that you want to give us? Okay, so um, the podcast is Gold Stars and Stripes, and we're on Apple, uh, the podcast right now. And then for Instagram, it's the same thing. And then for the C4 Foundation, it's c4foundation.org. Um, and that's our website. And then the same for uh, the social media as well. Um, and I'm just so honored to be on here. I love you guys. I think you both have done an amazing thing. Um, you have been such a light for the gold stars as well. I know you said that you met um, a lot of them after the fact when you guys started dating, but I just think that you've been huge in assisting us moving forward and um and I just am very honored to know both of you and thank you so much for having me on it means a lot thank you we just love you and we will continue to promote you and do whatever we can to help push you forward whatever you have coming down the line army navy yes army navy we are we have a date we have a date planned be great army navy tell your pops it's on august 26 2023 <laughs> So, I was like, Adelaide, I got a birthday present for you. We're going to watch football. Going to death. Yeah, <laughs> yes, for sure. Is there anything else you want to share with us? No, I'm just very honored to be on here. And really, like I said, again, you guys really help this community, you know, all the military communities, but really the SEAL community, the spouses and the gold stars. And I thank you for that. Well, one of these days, we might need to take a trip up to the ranch. <laughs> Anytime. I mean, next time we road trip over yeah. there. Yeah. What's up? I'm going to roll up in there. Up there. I will fly back for it. It'll give me a really fun excuse and we'll make it happen. Yeah. We'll try to get Dan and Tara also. Dan we'll and Tara. Weekend. And I would love to meet Charlie's family too. If you, if they're available, if they're up there. They would love you guys. Yeah. Well, you guys would have a blast. I wish I would have been able to meet Charlie. He's all the pictures of him are so fun that you know, I've watched different videos, um, little montages put together and he just looks like such a fun guy. He looks like the next generation. Um, I guess our generation of JT, mm. John Tumbleson that died in extortion. He sounds just like JT. Like JT was just full of life and love and laughter and happiness. He was, that just, was his nickname is true love. Yeah. JT's. <laughs> People have told me that before, yeah, true and love. I very much wish that I've been able to meet him too. So I have full life, man. Oh my gosh, so funny! I mean, you never think these guys are seals, yeah? Because like, what we have to do yeah. and what we're capable of. Because if you didn't know that, you just knew. I mean, the nickname is true because that's a real thing. I yeah. mean, this guy. So, what year do you do you know what year he went through, buds, Charlie? <sighs> Maybe two thousand and. Seven, seven. Okay, makes me think. Two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Yeah. So JT died in two thousand eleven. Um, but oh, he was I remember one too. They knew I each other. Like people but... talked about him being up at Bull Hill. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and then he came out of one. So they, they, they know. I they knew if each they yeah. Ever, yeah. Oh, they sure. Did. He. Oh my gosh! Like when I first met Marcus, um, JT would come over, come out to the ranch or whatever, and um, he was just that guy that like you described Charlie, just absolutely full of life and lives a mile a minute. Um, My mother has pictures of him at her house more framed, than me. <laughs> pictures. There's framed pictures. That's how solid of a guy that, you, that, that we're talking about here. My mother has framed pictures of him in, in, in her house. Like more than me. I love it. He's on the fridge. More than me. But I yeah, think, he's on the fridge. I think I I'm saw on a the picture fridge. of Charlie like in um, the American flag speedo and oh, there's yeah, JT, an exact yeah. picture yeah, of JT in an American flag speedo 4th of July in Coronado. 
And I'm like, these I are. I need the- to see these side by side. Yeah, I'm right, gonna. You probably send couldn't you- put them two together because they would have just. <laughs> they would have just uh, wrecked. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like you can't, can't have two like of them together. Fun. Too much. Yeah. <laughs> Never get anything done. Yeah, but Charlie definitely sounds like the younger generation of of JT. That's cool. I'm sure they're having fun in heaven together. Oh, no. you know <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. We well, appreciate you. you doing this, and we'll talk soon. Tell everybody said hello. Sounds good. Thank yes. you, guys. Yep. I appreciate you. God thank you. It.